My name is Dan Hammer. In today's video, we're going to look at family planning and genetics as it applies to sickle cell anemia. I'm going to help you understand the difference between sickle cell trait and sickle cell anemia. Sickle cells contain a genetic alteration in the beta globin component of the hemoglobin molecule. This is caused by a change in the genetic coding on chromosome 11. One small modification in a single DNA nucleotide results in a different amino acid being inserted into the beta globin protein of the hemoglobin molecule, resulting in the unique properties of sickle cells. For simplicity, we'll call this altered gene the sickle cell gene and the regular gene the normal red blood cell gene. For visual demonstration, I'm going to use the red apple to represent the normal red blood cell gene and the banana to represent the sickle cell gene. For most individuals, they have two copies of the normal red blood cell gene to produce normal beta globin, resulting in typical red blood cells. For individuals with sickle cell trait, they have one normal red blood cell gene and one sickle cell gene, so they produce both normal red blood cells and sickle cells in roughly equal proportions. Because of this, they do not usually experience significant health problems as a result of having sickle cell trait. For those with sickle cell anemia, they have two sickle cell genes. Now, genetics play a significant role in both the disease, symptoms, and family planning. So I will go through each potential combination between two people and their resulting child. Please remember that each parent has two types of blood cell genes and they will give one of these genes to their child. So there are four potential combinations. Let me get set up and I'll show you all of the potential combinations. Okay, let's do a quick review. For a person with normal red blood cell, they're going to have two normal red blood cell genes. For a person with sickle cell trait, they're going to have one normal red blood cell gene and one sickle cell gene. And for a person with sickle cell anemia, they're going to have two sickle cell genes. So here are the potential combinations. And let's start with the easiest ones first. If you've got two parents that have both normal red blood cell genes, then you're going to have four potential combinations and all of the offspring are going to have normal red blood cells. If you have a parent who has sickle cell anemia and both parents have sickle cell anemia, then again, four combinations, you're looking at the potential that all the offspring are going to have sickle cell anemia. So let's look at sickle cell trait. If both parents have sickle cell trait, that means each parent has one normal red blood cell gene, one sickle cell gene, here are your potential combinations. Twenty-five percent of the time, you're going to have a child that will have normal red blood cells. 25% of the time you're going to have a child that will have sickle cell anemia and 50% of the time you're going to have a child that will end up with sickle cell trait. So let's look at the next combination which would be one member having sickle cell anemia and the other one having sickle cell trait. So sickle cell trait with the other member having sickle cell anemia. What are the combinations? Well. you're going to have 50 percent of the time the resulting child will have sickle cell trait and 50 percent of the time the resulting child is going to have sickle cell anemia. Now finally we have one other combination which would be sickle cell trait with a person who has normal red blood cell genes. So let's look at that combination. So we've got sickle cell trait which would be this here combined with a person who has normal red blood cell genes. So again, we've got four combinations here. So we're looking at this combination here, this combination here, this combination here, and this combination here. So we're looking at 
50% of the time, the resulting child will have normal red blood cells, and 50% of the time, the child will have sickle cell trait. So, what does all this mean? It means that 1 in 12 African Americans has sickle cell trait, with 1 out of every 400 births having sickle cell anemia. Because of this, many people want to receive genetic counseling to better understand their child's risk for sickle cell disease. There are various testing options available to you to help you in your family planning. As you know, from either personal experience or the experience of a loved one, sickle cell anemia is an extremely difficult disease to manage. While we've offered you hope to help prevent some of the problems associated with sickle cell anemia, it still is a genetic disorder and can cause permanent damage to various organs and body systems. I hope what we have shown you and shared with you today will be beneficial in your family planning as you desire a normal life for your offspring. Hi, I'm back. You know, genetic counseling and this whole aspect of genetics can get kind of confusing and I left one potential combination out. That would be a person who has normal red blood cell genes with a person who has sickle cell anemia. So the resulting potential combination would be a child that had sickle cell trait. So 100% of the time that resulting child would have sickle cell trait. Again, I hope this whole aspect of the apples and the bananas give you a good representation of the different genetic combinations. And again, family planning is such a hugely important aspect for those people who have sickle cell anemia, sickle cell trait. Thank you for your time.